w a s d i k a Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today, I am going to go back to the basics and talk about how to cook rice without a rice cooker so that it comes out perfect every time. I've gotten lots of messages from people who are saying, "I don't know what's going on. I can't get the rice right. It's either too wet or too dry, or it's burnt to the bottom. What's the secret?" Is there a secret? So we're going to talk about all of that. I'll show you how I do it, and also go through everything I can think of that would affect the quality of your rice. So let's get started. If you don't buy good rice, there's nothing you can do in the cooking process that's going to make it any good. Okay, so no rice in a box, no instant rice of any kind. If you're cooking Thai food, always, always use jasmine rice from Thailand. You can call me a little biased, but I think it's the best rice in the world. So, how do you know the jasmine rice is good quality? When you open the bag, you should smell like a jasmine aroma right out of the bag. It should smell really good and actually like the jasmine flower. If you open the bag, you smell it, and it doesn't smell like anything. That could be just low quality rice. You want to choose a pot with a thick bottom because if the bottom is thin, you're going to get hot spots. It won't distribute the heat evenly, and that's how you're going to burn the bottom of the rice. Okay, and don't choose a pot that's too big. Choose a pot. The rice is going to grow three times. So put in your rice. Try to visualize. Okay, if it grows three times the current size, will it still fit? You gotta rinse the rice, and the reason why we rinse rice is I'll show you. So cold water, by the way, and then just swish it around with your hands, and then you'll notice that the water gets really cloudy, and that's what we're trying to get rid of. That's basically loose starch that's hanging out, and if you don't get rid of it, it's going to gum up your rice. The grains won't separate very nicely. You get like a sticky, gooey stuff at the bottom. It's just, it's just bad news, and your rice will feel like it's mushy, even though it's not, because there's all. Sorts of flour floating around. So pour off the first one as much as you can without pouring the rice down the drain, and then you do it again. For jasmine rice, that you're gonna have just sort of as plain rice with other dishes. I only rinse it twice. But if you're making fried rice, I wash it four or five times, basically until the water runs clear. Because with fried rice, you really don't want there to be any stickiness because that's how you get clumpy fried rice. It'll make it hard for you to sort of get the sauce to spread evenly. Okay. So now this time you. You want to drain out the water as much as you can because you don't want it to mess up with your water ratio. So what I do here's a little trick: is I take a sieve and then I just pour it out. Then I can really pour out as much as I can. All right, here's the big question: How much water do you add? This will actually depend on your particular rice, but most of the time, if you're cooking jasmine rice. One part rice to one and a quarter part water does the trick, at least close to it. If at the end you find that it is a little dry, you can always add more. But if you start out with too much, there's no going back. It's just gonna get wet, right? So, oh, here's another thing: old crop rice versus new crop rice. If your bag says new crop, you will need less water, okay? Because new crop, and I write about this in my cookbook, but. Long story short, new crop rice is softer and takes less water, so that's something to think about as well. If you're making fried rice, one part rice, one part water, because you're going to rehydrate that rice with all the sauces. So you want your rice to start out a little drier than it should be. In the beginning, if you're in a hurry, you can crank the heat all the way to high to get it to a simmer quickly. But then you want to turn it down as low as you can. If you're not in a rush, just start off medium heat and let it come to a simmer slowly. Because the danger with cranking it is, if you're not paying attention, it will boil over. Especially if you've got, you know, the pot is relatively full. Once it comes to a simmer, turn the heat down to as low as you can go while still maintaining just gentle, gentle bubbles, and then leave it for 15 to 20 minutes. And really. That is it. So here's the trick. Why do you want to turn it as low as you can? Yes, it will take a little longer, but once the water is dry, the heat is so low that it'll take a long time before it starts to burn the bottom. If you are in a hurry and you crank the heat, your rice will still cook fine. But now, if you don't get to it in time, you're gonna burn the bottom of that rice really quickly. 
how is this different from a rice cooker? And it's really not. I used to think when I was little that rice cookers did something special and different. You put in rice and you add water to the little line and ah, rice comes out. But rice cookers is just like a pot that happens to know when to turn itself off. So the way rice cooker works is as soon as the water dries up, the bottom of the pot gets really hot and it senses that temperature change and it shuts it off. Okay, so the, but other than that, it's just a pot. So you're trying to do the same thing now. The only thing you have to do is be careful and keep an eye on when it's done. All right, so the first clue that your rice is done is when you look in and there's nothing happening, no bubbling, it just looks still. That's when you want to check on it. Mmm, that smells good. Use a rubber spatula and go along the sides and then just push and then you'll be able to see the bottom of the pot. And if the bottom of the pot is dry, it's done. Mine's not dry yet, I can still see that it's wet. Then you just pat it down and like, like nothing happened. And then keep it going until it's done. In my experience, 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so now let's check the rice. Ooh, and it should be fluffy, like this. I know it's dry and now I can taste it. I'm a fan of tasting your food. How do you know things are done? You taste it. Mmm, mmm, perfect. So now you want to fluff it so that it's not so compact because if you serve it straight from a compact bowl, you just get like a really solid puck of rice on the, on the plate. So like this, then you get nice fluffy rice. The other option is to cook it like pasta, basically. You put a whole bunch of water and you boil the rice in a lot of water until it's done and then you drain it and then you let it dry off a little bit and then, you know, off it goes. But I just find that that method is too complicated because as you can see, you just need to know a few tricks and tips here and there. Then it's a one pot situation. With that one, you gotta, you gotta colander, you gotta do more dishes. Ah, this is just so much easier. And that is it. I hope that was helpful for you. If you still have questions or if I missed anything, please feel free to write me on Twitter or Facebook, or you can write me through my website, hotthaikitchen.com. All the details of what we just went through, I'll write all of that out on my website as well. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.